Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Upper left-hand corner, we have Hawk starting as the Orange Zerg. Upper right-hand corner, we have Gypsy starting as the Teal Terran. This is on Goodnight. And we'll... I want to give a couple shout-outs, first of all. If you check out Gypsy... Here's the weird thing, is I never know how long it's going to take me through all the matches, depending on how many I'm uploading daily, to get to the live where it's like, what I'm saying on stream is what's happening on the YouTube channel comparatively. But, so hopefully, if you go in the back archives, maybe Artosis will upload it to YouTube as well. Artosis hosted some show matches between Gypsy and Scan. They essentially, day one was versus Protoss, day two was versus Gypsy, or versus Gypsy, versus Zerg. Day three was versus Terran, or, and that's actually today. In fact, if people in stream want to catch that tonight, I think that's happening tonight. But those matches were, especially the versus Zerg matches, were really fun to watch, in my opinion. And go check out Gypsy, give him some support uh, versus Scan. Scan, I want to give him a shout out as well because he's one of the bridges between the actual Korean professionals and the foreigner community. And it's really generous of him uh, to even be willing to to engage in those matches. But I really felt like I learned at least a bit. Specifically, I will say Crazy Zerg made an appearance in one of the games. And I really got a better understanding of what Zerg are trying to abuse versus Terran in that specific matchup. Hawk opening up with an Overlord build first, probably going to go for a 12 hatchery. Overlord making its way to the bottom left-hand corner. Gypsy has not gone for a front door seal. He's gone with Supply Depot first on Good Night in this drone. Repositioning, going ahead, getting that down. But these two guys, top North American, I got to give the edge to Gypsy in this overall match just because Gypsy's, if you've been watching these games, Gypsy's, Zer well, his, his matchup against Zerg is just so strong right now. And he's actually going to open up for a command center first build. Wow. On a four player map. So he should end up with the overall economic lead. We'll see if Hawk. What, how Hawk responds in kind. That's going to give him a bit of an opening jump. Oftentimes, so if you end up doing this against a nine pool, you lose outright. But in this situation, I think he's just assuming he's like, I know Hawk's going to go for more of a macro oriented game in most of his builds. Hawk looks like he is going to get the first scout off, moving his drone to that bottom right hand corner, or sorry, the upper right hand corner. First barracks underway, spawning pool is down about halfway finished, and the extractor up, or I think that was up around the standard 205-ish mark. But uh, Gypsy, let's see if he adjusts his pathing, the drone making its way, and it is going to see, first of all, that command center might be able to harass that SCV. It's going to go ahead and try to get some damage there. The Marine is a ways off, so this is going to be basically free damage. Gypsy might want, yeah, he's moving that second SCV immediately. So Hawk doing a little bit what he can. You can see already trading the... And that delays that command center just a little bit. But every little bit helps. And he's going to go ahead and engage and get some more damage done. If Mutalisks end up being... This also means you have a damaged... Uh, this, first of all, that's delaying mining time. Because you have several ICVs that are coming off to go ahead and, and engage this. But also down the line, if Mutalisks can s somehow get up there, that's like a little bit of an extra hit. So every little advantage counts. Moving immediately to Lair. So we are seeing two hatch... Uh, build two bear. I think this is going to be because it's not a front door seal um, and also need to get Marines out sooner rather than later to fill that bunker just in case Zerglings are on the way and not seeing any Zerglings in production yet from Hawk. It looks like he wants to just go ahead and play straight uh, economic uh, and maybe he just wants to play catch up to keep the get more drones out to make sure that he's equalizing things. This SCV has managed to sneak into this base. It's seeing pretty much everything it wants to see. It's going to see that layer timing and without the Zerglings, it's going to be completely free. Three hatch play from Hawk. So he's dropping a third hatchery inside his main. <clears throat> Refinery's going up for Gypsy. And this is an, and actually canceling upon seeing zero Zerglings. Wow, Gypsy. Canceling that bunker to get the minerals now that he has four Marines out. Because he realizes that, okay, I'm going to be in a fine position to deal with this. So Hawk actually backing off. I'm, I'm interested to see how this plays out. So now finally some Zerglings out. But... The build order has been revealed. With the third hatchery, if you're going for a three hatch in base muta, oftentimes what you end up with a a slower timing to get more mutalisks and kind of a more stable economy is what it comes down to. I'm wondering if it's still just going to be the two hatches worth of mutalisk or if Hawk is going to go for more of the standard uh, straight mutalisk, three hatch mutalisk build and building it interior uh, here. What this does do with this third base it really does mean you have to get a little bit more aggressive. Looks like the engineering bay inside base. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. <sighs> ah, excuse me. Um, 
sneeze commentary. Engineering Bay up, Weapons 1 all along the way, Academy up as well. So it looks like Gypsy doing a little bit of a modification on that plus one weapons build. He's got an additional barracks out a little bit earlier. The Zergling trying to sneak around that corner to maybe get some scouting information. Wants to see how many barracks are up in the main, not quite able to do so. There's not an Overlord in position to really scoot in and scoot out either. But the Spire's finished, three hatcheries up. We're see how many mutals end up getting produced if it's going to be the full-fledged Looks like it is going to be the full-fledged eight to go ahead and engage. Oftentimes when you see just old three hatch mutalists, I think they just came out a little bit later. I'm wondering if Hawk is just going to go straight up, just try to pound this with mutalisk, which considering it's going to be an early weapons one build, I'm worried about him doing that. Looks like he is going to opt to move back towards the Hydralis den. Now here's the thing, in standard Zerg versus Terran these days, you'll see the Zerg player trying to secure a third base, and really the Mutalisks are out in the air to make that happen. Fourth Barracks up. Keeping the in-base hatchery it means it's going to be a little bit... Basically, Hawk needs to have some guaranteed map control before he's really going to feel comfortable getting the hatchery up, because it's going to take a lot longer to make that happen. Picking off an SCV with the initial six, seventh one and eighth one now grouping up, eating a little bit of initial damage. There's... Two turrets now with the natural expansion. The Marines being engaged. One Mutalisk already down. Even without the weapons upgrade. I like that Hawks is diving in and being aggressive. Trying to get what he can done before that weapons one upgrade comes online. I think he's used to this style of play. But has already lost. <laughs> Jayun calling owned. Already lost four Mutalisks. Being overly aggressive and doing a lot of damage over the missile turrets. And now Hawk, without at fifth Mutalisk, really can't even pick off Marines. So he's looking for what he can do. To sneak in between, but I honestly I feel like Hawk's on the back foot all the way across the board now because he's building additional Mutalisk, but he's only sitting on two base. It's going to be a while before he can secure his third gas. He's still going to try to do the uh, kind of standard, okay, he, he's grabbing a hatchery in the bottom left hand corner. So using the length and size of the map to his advantage. So if Gypsy, maybe he can secure a third gas that way, but honestly, Gypsy can afford to be a little bit more aggressive. Considering he knows that Mutalist count is just lower, and he's got that level one weapons advantage, level one we weapon or level one flyer attacks trying to come online. Hawk doing what he can to try to slow this ball down, and actually going for a counterattack. Keep in mind that bunker mostly empty. Zerglings were able to sneak in, some of them getting cut across, and Hawk going for a counterattack, which is going to force Gypsy back. Bunker down. The Marines have gotten picked off, so Hawk finding ways. To stay in this match, actually might even be able to pick off SEVs, which are going to slow those starports down. So Hawk making something out of this. Taking some additional damage, losing two Mulesks again. But well played. Buying himself some more time. So Hatchery looks like it's going to get established this bottom left-hand corner. He is dropping a creep colony. He's got some lurkers morphing in the front to go ahead and seal that. But Gypsy marching to this bottom left-hand corner. That's going to have to get defended, most likely with Mulesks alone. And so look for Gypsy, I think upon recognition, well, potentially upon recognition of that, to get aggressive that bottom left-hand corner. Another Mutalisk getting picked off. So it's just four Mutalisks right there. Some Lurkers are trying to race. Oof. But I don't know that this is going to work out for Hawk. He wants to race to that bottom left-hand corner, get them established on the ramp. That's been scanned now for Gypsy. He's just going to dive into this. And I don't know if these Lurkers are going to get in position. Yeah, getting cut off. Gypsy delaying, though, moving around. To engage this that might give hawk a little bit of time to go ahead yeah he's morphing a lurker if he could have morphed those on the ramp he might have been able to get something additionally done some mutalis the four mutalisks that are still alive flying back around so it's going to be one lurker diving here and i don't think hawk's going to be in time this hatchery most certainly going to get picked off lurkers grouping up there so he might be able to recapture this the marines reprioritizing across the lurkers. The lurkers burrowing everywhere. Gypsy not focus firing the hatchery. Now trying to focus fire the hatchery, but it's too late. And Hawk saves the hatchery. There is another grouping of medic marines there, but with all of those lurkers in that location, Gypsy going to have to back off. So a little bit of a kind of misplaced both directions. Gypsy feeling like he was in a strong economic position, dropping two bunkers just to prevent a Zergling all in on his front, but Hawk has managed to establish this bottom left hand base. I still think Gypsy's ahead overall because he's got the double starport running. This is a very late third gas for Hawk. He does have a Hive Tech up. He's getting that Defiler Mound up. He's got that Nidus Canal in position to provide reinforcements, but all Gypsy has to do is go ahead and sit back. Keep in mind there was that level one weapons 
upgrade on the Mutalisk switch. And those Mutal that Mutalisk harass just, uh, aside from that one counterattack to just stay in the game, didn't do a lot for Hawk. Double Starport starting to roll, irradiate upgrading. And the weapons upgrades already at level one, working towards level one armor. It looks like a second engineering bay being dropped right now. Consume upgrading. But right now, Gypsy, I feel like, is going to be able... He's got the overall worker count. I think he's in position to go ahead and take a third once those science vessels are out. Uh, well, might want to delay a little bit until there's better upgrades. But point being, because of this delay of this third gas, because of a lot of delay in tech, and because of Hawk's inability to really... Uh, he also lost a lot of these mules, really spending a lot of resources to defend that third. Gypsy ahead in supply. I think his economy is in a really good position, and he's going to be able to go ahead and get those science vessels and kind of do his standard thing. I like the Hawks going around, taking this opportunity to just pick off what he can. But he can go ahead and establish... Ooh, he needs to make sure he keeps this Medic Marine Ball cohesive. Um, but he's got this bottom left-hand corner where he can go ahead and threaten that natural expansion, pick that off. Looks like he's going to move up with the rest of the Medic Marines, kind of hang out near that front door, and he can just start dropping radiates on Hawk's front door. Defiler Mound is there, but it's going to come down to uh, Dark Swarm and Zerglings and Lurkers to kind of push this back. And in the meantime, there's going to be several irradiates that I think Gypsy's going to be able to do without a lot of threat. Still don't see any Scourge out here. Looks like some Scourge are being produced just now gypsy holding up at this natural expansion while he's doing so the mule is going to go ahead and try to go and cut off reinforcements doing a good job of finding that pocket window that's some map awareness right there but a radiates being dropped some hydralisks being built towards the front just to provide and i think that's again to be morphed into lurkers down the line but some initial radiates going down and what hawk is going to have to do is is if gypsy keeps just moving up dropping irradiates as this Lurker count drops, he's just going to have to constantly be replenishing that with Lurkers and spending gas that he probably doesn't want to spend on that situation. More Marines moving out. Let's see it with the Science Vessels uh, walking out. I think Gypsy's going to... And so basically Gypsy just had and a bunch of Zerglings dying right there. Gypsy has a firm control on the map currently. The Mutalisks are still out here, but they're one irradiate away from being obliterated. I like that Gypsy, upon losing that last Medic Marine group, is actually keeping them with the Science Vessels so he can drop and irradiate if he finds these mutalists, it looks like the mutalists were looking to go ahead and cut reinforcements off. Gypsy hunting it, looking for the irradiate, does get the irradiate down. Nice split, though, by Hawk to preserve some of these mutalists and actually might get a science vessel kill as a result. Does get one science vessel down, but loses the rest of his mutalists. The rest are severely weakened, and Gypsy once again has Hawk boxed in. Two additional, and the science vessel count continues to grow. Unless I missed it, I missed science vessels getting picked off on the front. Looks like some science vessels did get picked off. On the front. So actually, Hawk, despite... No, okay, never mind. There's still the, the three grouped up. Zerglings and Lurkers trying to push out from Hawk. That is a nice swarm right there. To go ahead and push things... To push Gypsy back. But Gypsy... Still just boxing back these Medic Marines to either corner. And he can just re-engage whenever he feels like. Because Hawk still not getting any firm map control out of this. Another hatchery being plopped down. There are some macro hatches back here, but really what... Let's say additional radiates being dropped down. A racer trick! On that natural. This is a bit exposed. There's not enough mutalists, and honestly, the mutalists might die if they just get tapped by that irradiate, so they don't want to get too close. So Hawk's economy taking a lot of damage. The hydralisks that were there trying to do what they can to this science vessel. The science vessel continuing to try to assault these drones, and... Gypsy's, I think, in a comfortable enough position with all of this. Feels enough ahead where he's like, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and expend that. And some additional Zerglings. And it looks like Lurkers and Hydralis trying to engage to that corner. This, I missed this Medic Marine army being pushed back to go ahead and try to take that natural expansion. I think Gypsy, once he, yeah, he's bringing this Medic Marine army down. He can go ahead and swat down this fourth at leisure. He's already grabbed his base in the bottom right-hand corner. It looks like he's going to go ahead and just take two expansions at once, which he very easily can. Ooh. Walking a little bit on that Lurker, I think that was just kind of a... I don't even know that he cares about that, though, with that A move. Hawk trying to defend it from the high ground. Some drones coming off the line to try to defend this. So everything coming off the line. I think that might have been a missed rally more than anything. Some additional Lurkers coming down. A good swarm to go ahead and push this back. And Hawk actually might be able to get this fourth base up. But Gypsy behind this is taking two additional bases. But Hawk finding himself some, pre some breathing room to stay in this match. I think Gypsy with... I think he was... Trying to micro, and this is kind of the... Ooh, actually has some drones at... Or, sorry, some some SCVs at misposition. This uh, command center hasn't quite landed yet. 
moving up with some additional medic marines. So actually, Hawk finding maybe some room here to get out on the map someplace. He's got the fourth up. Maybe if he can grab that gas. He does have the Ultralisk Cavern down. He's working on that Carapace upgrade. Gypsy's still trying to say, uh, basically play in his face. The Science Vessel's still overall. Let's see if he can drop some additional Radiates. I'm wondering if Plague... Yeah, Plague's there. Does manage to plague all the Science Vessels. And the Scourge moving forward to maybe to get something done. But Gypsy doing a good job of pressing forward in position. The SCV line... Gypsy, yeah, falling apart a little bit. I don't think he realizes this Command Center is not yet landed. So these SCV are effectively distance mining at this stage. And this little things like this are allowing Hawk to kind of push back into this match. So pl perhaps playing a little bit bedraggled and uh, tired right this moment. Third starport has been dropped to keep that science vessel count high. So Hawk actually finding room to get back into this match. His gas through, I think, a little bit of uh, mismanagement here from Gypsy overall. Gypsy still has the lead. He's still at four bases versus four base Zerg. But if Hawk can go ahead and get some gas... Somehow take out the Science Vessel fleet and get some Ultralis down as a result. With Ultra and the Dark Swarm kind of pressing forward, maybe he can clear things out. Maybe if he can get a Mulisk to just peck at these Science Vessels and wipe them out in grouping. But Gypsy going ahead and trying to close that gap once again. The Zerglings moving off now that they have the Adrenal upgrade to go ahead and wipe out this Marine front. There are no medics with them, so that is permanent damage. The rest of that Medic Marine ball trying to group up. Hawk wiping out a good amount of Marines. And actually catching a Firebat in grouping. I like that Gypsy's adding the Firebats in, realizing that Hawk's economy is going to be somewhat stifled. And also it's going to come just basically fewer Ultralisks out on the field. However, the Ultra count is there. They are getting irradiated essentially for free. I heard some... Uh, I think I missed some Science Vessels under Assault. Still six Science Vessels out. That count is continuing to grow. Some battle cruisers now being filtered in as well. It's going to force... Some additional Scourge and Mutalisks and other things to be... Basically, gas that's not spent on Ultralis to be forced. Zerglings cleaning up that Medic Marine Force. And Hawk, for the first time, running free out on the map, but immediately getting swatted down. These Zerglings getting obliterated. Gypsy looking for an opportunity to go ahead and re-engage, drop some Irradiates on some of those powerful units. Gypsy finally looks like landing at 3 o'clock. Sitting on four bases. Should have the overall economic lead. Hawk needs to get something accomplished here. Moving with those Ultralisks out. It looks like they are going to get irradiated. Before and get well before engaging this army. But trying to press up. Wow, Hawk with a big army moving to this upper right hand corner. Gypsy getting back in position to try to defend this. Some science vessels getting taken out overhead. The lurkers dropping before they're able to reach that natural expansion. I don't see a defiler with this. Which would have made it a much more threatening army. The medic marines... Trying to push and get this high ground back. The Ultralisks melting. And that looks like that Lurker, that army getting cleaned up. And Gypsy just has too much at this stage. He's also got level 3 weapons, level 2 armor, and should have level 3 armor momentarily. Also has that level 1 uh, sh weapons upgrade. And that's going to make those BCs able to one-shot the Scourge. Which makes them even harder to deal with. And forces even more gas expenditure on Hawk's side of things. So things looking a little bit dire from Hawk. Hawk moving some Ultralisks and Zerglings to the bottom right-hand corner. But being caught... While there aren't any, well, there's, yeah, being caught out of position and just going to lose this army for free. So Hawk sitting at four bases. Gypsy can end up, should be able to, to clean this up over the long term. Scourge wandering up, able to get, no, not able to get a science vessel. It looks like they were able to get one science vessel. For a moment, I thought they were going to be able to get two, but only catching the single. And now Gypsy, once again, moving out. The battle cruiser starting to press into that natural expansion. And it looks like they're going to be able to get several drone kills. Overall, Creep Colony being dropped, I assume, to get a Spore Colony up to help deal with this. But Hawk, not looking good. He's down 70, practically 60, 70 supply, depending on the macro cycle uh, from Gypsy. It looks like that and Gypsy just moving to the middle of the map to engage these Zerglings. Really, Hawk with these Ultralisks has not gotten a good exchange, I think, in really any of these fights overall. Looks like there is a good plague on those battle cruisers to try to deal with them. Those spark the the plague plus the spore colony will help deal with that. And actually, that's kind of a clever solution to that problem. If you go, if you get that spore colony down, you get the plague down. That spore colony can get a little bit more accomplished. A single mulist getting wiped out overhead, and Hawk still doesn't have an answer for these battle cruisers. Working on the spire, that spire gets taken out. Taking out those battle cruisers is going to be a big ordeal. And honestly, I think this is going to be GG momentarily. 
Because the Ultralisks in the middle of the map, just because, yeah, just getting wiped out here. Very softened up by the Irradiate. Gypsy still has the Medic Marine standing. He's at 157 supply. Looks like the Ultralisks are going to be able to clean some stuff up there. Yeah, the Sport, yeah. Sport calling it down. Looks like the Battle Cruisers are going to get wiped out with some Scourge that were produced as an uh, urge in urgency last second. Some more Battle Cruisers starting to get fielded, though. Still f plenty of science vessels overhead. Additional radiates being dropped. Hawk trying to take that 9 o'clock base. I don't know how long he's going to be able to hold that, though. All Gypsy has to do is sit back on what he's already got, keep the macro up, and keep these irradiates dropping, and he should win this match. Some Ultras finding some Marines out of position. And Hawk sitting, sending some Zerglings, maybe, and it looks like... I like what Hawk's doing. He's trying to keep Gypsy out of position so he can get that 9 o'clock base up. There is a bunker here. The Marines are not in it. Upon seeing that bunker, he's going to go ahead and try to reposition. It looks like he is going to catch some Marines without the medic support in the middle of the map. And just trying to find a pocket, some window, where he can get these Zerglings where they can be effective and just doing something out on the map. In the meantime, the battle cruisers have managed to sneak through. They're going to find that 9 o'clock base. Hawk diving in with Zerglings for a counterattack on Gypsy's main. But there are two bunkers and a bunch of science vessels to go ahead and greet them. Regrouping to try to engage there. But keep in mind, there's no defiler overhead to make them more powerful. And you can just see Hawk just trying to find some window to engage. It looks like he is going to be able to wipe out the medic marines that are out in midfield. Irradiate's dropping now. So Hawk actually somehow finding windows to go ahead and clear the Medic Marines here. It looks like the Battle Cruiser is rapidly taking out that 9 o'clock base. This is the stage of the match where, yeah, Hawk's just kind of wandering, looking for some window, some space. And it looks like he's constantly finding these Medic Marines, or sorry, the Marines, without the Medic support. And so the Ultral is kind of getting a bit of bonus damage. Zergling's sneaking into the 3 o'clock location. Able to force a lift off and killing some SCVs there. Some more battle cruisers being fielded. That Spore Colony back up. A bunch of Scourge diving into those battle cruisers there. But that is, despite taking that out, that's gas that Hawk did not want to spend on Scourge. An Ultralisk somehow gets up into the bottom right hand corner. There's a bunch of barracks here as well. Gypsy lifting off this command center. So Hawk has forced some economic disruption on Gypsy's side of the match. He do He is mining. Still at three, well, he's at three bases. His main's mined out. His natural expansion, look, he does need to get that nine o'clock base up. Looks like he's trying to grab the six o'clock base as well. The Zerglings up on top of that SCV line that is fleeing. A single Ultralisk chewing up, what is that, 12 kills, 13 kills? Fully upgraded, by the way, at this stage of the match. And Hawk has managed to survive and hang on. He's still well behind economically, but he's certainly making a match of this. Zerglings, once again, finding, and Gypsy just playing a little bit off this game. Finally getting the Marines into the bunker. Ultralisks and Zerglings in the natural expansion. Finally, the Science Vessel is coming in to irradiate all of this. Using the Eraser trick as well, rather than irradiating. So, initially irradiating the Ultralisks and trying to get the... I actually wonder if you... I like this. Using the Irradiate to block against the Zerglings. Trying to get up the ramp. And trying to reproduce, it looks like he's just, he has a medic, uh, sorry, a marine squad that's just trying to go back and forth and clear out everything in between. Finally able to get that reestablished. This Ultralisk has 19 kills and is still alive in that bottom right hand corner, by the way. Natural Expansion doesn't have any mining, but it is still able to kill some SCVs. Hawk is all over the place right now, but BCs in the meantime have managed to breach the bottom left hand corner. It looks like they might be able to take a hatchery out. So both players doing damage to one another. Gypsy, though, his economy really battered at this stage. His main base is breached. Ultralisks are on top of this. They're starting to work on some firebats coming out. Just in case there was a, to deal, I guess, with the Zergling counter. That mineral only is not going to stand for long. That expansion's been taken out bottom left-hand corner. I'm not sure for how long. More Zerglings and Ultralisks taking out the base in the bottom right. And Gypsy's starting to fall apart here in this match. One starport taken down. Still a ton of science vessels overhead. That's ten science vessels. But the Zerglings and Ultralisks have managed to get on top of absolutely everything. So that bottom right-hand base is not mining. The 3 o'clock base is mining, but that's the last mining base for Gypsy. So Gypsy just hurting for minerals all of a sudden. He still does have that Science Vessel count. But Hawk also equally battered 
because he's only mining what is this bottom left and is there still a battle cruiser it's still a battle cruiser with 17 kills 18 kills now wreaking havoc in this bottom left hand base so hawk trying to reestablish his nine o'clock get that mining his natural expansion is going to be out so it's going to be technically three base because the six o'clock base is going to get mining up again versus potentially two base if gypsy can somehow get back in this bottom left or currently this is his only mining base zerglings are everywhere right there a defense matrix on top of the zerglings to go ahead and wipe them out more ultralisks and more zerglings making their way across and hawk somehow has found a way back into this match and all of a sudden is leading and i think hawk might take this match at this stage that three o'clock base has been lifted off as if he's trying to distance mine at the mineral only they're getting wiped out and gg well played by Hawk. I got to say, for large portions of this match, I thought Gypsy had a death lock on it. But Hawk, somehow able to get on that match, get complete full upgrades and just being everywhere at once. Well played. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll move on to game... What is that going to be? Game four of the second set. And then I believe... We're pretty close to the end of the NA team battles that I got. But that was a fun one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.